anybody has to try mediation these days, so they've lost nothing uh, in some respects by coming to the first mediation session. Um, because it's now a requirement before you can e even issue an application, uh, you've ticked a box by, by coming. And the advantage of it is that, of course, until you try it, you don't know how it's going to work for you. But a lot of clients actually find it more beneficial than they ever thought they would. So they come along to the first mediation session almost under duress because they're told they've ha they they're told they're having to. And then they come along and they actually think, well, actually that was more beneficial and we were able to talk around sort of all different issues in a way that I didn't think we ever would. And I think it, it is a conversation really as mediation. It's a conversation between your former partner or your former wife who has the care of your children. And it's really important to open up a dialogue with that person, not necessarily just for the mediation process, but of course for, for the long-term benefit of the children anyway. So if you can start to air some of the issues and to overcome those issues in what is really effectively supposed to be a safe environment, allowing you to talk about what you want to talk about without being fearful of it coming back to sort of be used against you in, in court proceedings and things, it then sometimes re-establishes trust and it's often trust that's been broken down when a relationship ends. So if you can start to build on that trust, then it sort of establishes a good foundation for where you can be in the future. So you can start to have that dialogue, you can start to have that relationship building uh, or mending for the sake of your children. Um, and that's something you don't ever get at court, because by the time you started the court process, it's accusations flying backwards and forwards, you never really get to sit down and talk with the person. Uh, and discuss what the real issues are or what the concerns are. You're asked very specific questions and it doesn't really give you that ability to, to talk to the other person as you would if you were still in a relationship with them. Many people come in to see me and say at the outset, oh well, there's no point because my, other, uh, my former partner won't attend or my former wife won't attend. Um, and it's amazing actually that the other person then is willing to come to mediation and, and is willing to sit down and, and talk it through. So sometimes there's an immediate misconception that the other person simply won't come to something uh, or won't come and talk about the children or won't come and talk about finances. Um, so if you can overcome that, if you, I, I mean partly these days you have to attend mediation anyway. So again, you've lost nothing by, by coming and talking about mediation and finding out about it and then inviting the other person to, to, along, to come along to something similar and then with the hope that you will have a full-on mediation session. And I think, you know, many people do want to resolve issues and, and there's usually something which is stopping them from being able to talk to the other party. Um, I had one mediation case where, uh, where, where the chap had suffered a, a, a long-term illness. He, he was diagnosed with being quite poorly. Um, and the lady, all she wanted really, well, it, was, it was a mediation about sorting out the house more than it was anything else. Um, and it was a real stumbling block, they just couldn't move it forward. Um, and what it turned out to be was that all she wanted him to do was to say sorry and to acknowledge that although he was the one diagnosed with having, having the illness, it had a direct impact on the rest of the family as well. And her, her real stumbling block and her, her real, you know, the reason why she was so blinkered in being able to deal with the finances is because he, he at no point had acknowledged that they had suffered too. And when it came out in mediation that really she wanted him to say sorry, um, and he acknowledged that he hadn't really thought about it from the family's point of view, only from his own point of view, put his head in his hands and said, I'm so sorry. As soon as he uttered those words, we sorted out the finances. So, so often, the reason why somebody doesn't want to talk about the issues, there is something that's preventing them. And if you can get to the heart of that and if you can deal with that issue, then other things just fall into place.